I think I'm ready now, and we'll talk about grassing. Um, so this is probably review for most of or all of you, but that's fine. Um, and at some point, I promise that Zoom will catch up with me and we'll stop getting these delays. Graphing on the promise things I can't actually enforce. There we go. Graphing on the Cartesian thing. So Graphs are a visual way to present data. And in particular, graphs are a visual way of presenting paired values x comma y. So you've got some relationship between two variables, maybe Maybe X is the radius of a circle, and Y is the area of that same circle, and we've got a relationship between them. You might at some point have learned that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So that's an equation. Um, equations can be hard to look at and make anything of. I mean, this equation might not be so bad at some point you've probably seen the word parabola, and you might know that the graph of this is going to be a parabola. But if you have slightly more complicated equations, one was, I don't know, 10x divided by 10 plus x just selecting something at random. It's sort of hard to know what to make of this. I mean, for example, what will happen as X increases? If X is big, does that mean Y is big? Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe when X gets big, Y gets small. And it's hard to just to look at that equation and know the answer to the question. So the point of graphing is to create the visual representation of the equation so we can just look at it and figure out what's happening. I mean, let's Continuing with this thing just a little while longer, what does happen as X gets big? With the power of Desmos and the power of graphing, we can zoom out. And we see that as X gets big, Y just approaches 10. Um, y doesn't get big, Y doesn't get small, Y doesn't approach zero. It looks as if Y is just approaching some number. So something that would be very difficult for us to figure out just by looking at this equation, we're able to see quickly using the power of technology. So that's what it's for. Um, 
In terms of actually doing it, our graphing in this class is going to be done using technology. I think it's foolish to try to create graphs by hand and to spend 10 minutes on something that you can do in 10 seconds using your graphing calculator or using Desmos. But we should still understand how graphs work. Just a general idea of what they are. I've said that graphs are used when you want to visualize data and that data shows up in pairs, X comma Y. And I gave An example where we're looking at geometry, we're looking at circles, and we've got the radius of the circle and the area of the circle, and we want to relate those. So x is the radius, y is the area, The equation relating them is y equals pi x squared. So graphing on the Cartesian plane is one of those things that is now so fundamental to mathematics that it's sort of hard to believe that somebody invented the concept that it wasn't always there, but the Cartesian plane is named after its inventor, a French philosopher named René Descartes. And the story goes that Descartes was looking, was lying sick in bed, looking at the ceiling and trying to keep his mind occupied. And he was watching a fly crawl along his ceiling. And he asked the question, if I wanted to store that fly's location mathematically, how could I do that? And what he came up with is, that if those are two edges of the ceiling, so this is a corner of the ceiling, and the fly is here, for example, he could store the fly's location by measuring this distance, and measuring that distance, and those two numbers together would tell him where the phi is. And in terms of modern mathematical language, that horizontal distance is x, and that vertical distance is y. And I feel like maybe that pale color I don't know how visible that is. Let me go back to black. So in modern mathematical terms, the Cartesian plane is formed by taking a number line Let's say zero is there. So this is one two, three, negative one, negative two, and so on. And then we're going to take a second number line and we're going to intersect it with the first at a 90 degree angle right here. One, two, three, four, five, 
negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and so on. And this number line, we give a name to, we call it the x-axis. And this number line, we also give a name to, we call it the y-axis. Let me erase that smudge. And if we have a point, say the point four comma two, well, this four is an x value, and this two is a y value. So x value, x axis, we count one, two, three, here's four. Y value, Y axis, we count one, two. And this, uh, the point four comma two is therefore located there on the Cartesian thing. Maybe I, if I get rid of some of that detritus around it, it will be a little more visible. So there's the point four comma two. And if I have two comma negative one, we can have negative numbers. This is an innovation in Descartes' bedroom. You could only have positive distances, but we allow numbers to be negative. So here's one, two units. And then because we have a negative one, we go in the negative direction. And very much not to scale, I'm afraid, but there's the point two comma negative one. So, I mean, I think this is probably familiar to a lot so I'm going through this a little quickly, but if anybody has questions, always feel free to raise your hand or, I mean, just interrupt me even. This is graphing. And then when you have an equation, This equation corresponds to an infinite number of points. You know, when x equals zero, well, when x equals zero, what's y? Also zero, thank you. So this statement corresponds to the point zero comma zero. And also, I mean, there are an infinite number of statements like this I could make. When x equals one, y equals pi. So that corresponds to the point one comma pi. Um, maybe I shouldn't assume, 
pi is a constant. It's about 3.14 or something. It shows up a lot in mathematical formulas, so it gets a special name. And you know, when x equals one half, y is whatever a fourth of pi is. When x is 10, y is about 314. You can just make those statements until you're sick of it, until you're blue in the face. And if you take that infinite collection of points, if you take all of these statements that you could make, and you graph all of those points on the Cartesian plane, then making allowances for the fact that I'm not much of an artist, you wind up with something like that. Any questions so far? Then I want to make a statement. We must be careful. Graphing. Come on, Zoom, you can do better than this. We must be careful of graphing equations. Where X and Y have real world meanings. And we have to be careful because in a lot of real world situations, not every value of X and Y makes sense. And Desmos or your calculator isn't necessarily going to recognize that. But let's keep with the example that X is a radius and Y is an area. Then the famous equation, I mean, it's normally stated in terms of A and R, A equals pi R squared, but Y equals pi X squared, the area is pi times the radius squared. I already gave a, a rough graph of that on a previous frame. We can have a nicer graph using the power of technology. Y equals pi times x squared. Well, it probably doesn't look nice at the moment, but if I go to my x axis, and I mess around a little. Then it gives me an error message to, there we go. So here's what this thing looks like. According to Desmos, and here, is what this thing looks like according to me, but neither of these pictures can be quite right because in terms, let's look at a point, uh, 9.8302. 
the transacted 10 comma 302. This is saying that when the radius is 10, the area is 302, right? Again, rounding, um, let, let's say we're measuring in inches. When the radius is seven inches, the area is 156 square inches. When the radius, I'm reading off the numbers from the screen if they're in the back. I, I know you might not be able to actually see these, but when the area, when the radius is 15 inches, the area is 713 inches. Okay. This point here doesn't make any sense. This point here says that when the radius is negative 11.93 inches, the area is 447 inches. And the reason I say that doesn't make sense is that the radius of a circle cannot be negative. If a radius is a distance, you can measure it with a ruler. The radius has to be a positive. So the, this point shouldn't be there. It's saying something that isn't true. And our Desmos cannot understand that. Desmos is just looking at this formula. It cannot say X is a radius, it has to be positive. We, the people who are creating this graph, have to recognize that for ourselves. Let me give a quick definition. If this were a trigonometry class, we'd be spending a lot of time on this, but it isn't, so we won't. Um, the, you see when we have these axes, this x-axis and this y-axis, we're dividing the plane into regions. A region up here, a region up here, a region down here, a region down here. By one of those inexplicable traditions that sometimes pop up in mathematics, those regions are numbered like that, counterclockwise. And they're called quadrants. And if X and why both are positive, the graph is a stop. in this first quadrant. In quadrant one. And this doesn't always happen, but it happens a lot. You know, age, always positive. Weight, always positive. Revenue, always positive. Length, always positive. A lot of equations involve quantities that always have to be positive. Um, and as I say, it doesn't always happen. Temperature, allowed to be negative. 
no reason temperature should be positive. But a lot in a lot of real world situations, oh, the, oh, um, we'll get a graph and then we'll have to say, well, only part of this graph makes sense. Only the part of this graph in the first quadrant makes sense. That's what happened here. X is a radius. A radius has to be positive. Y is an area. An area has to be positive. So only the part of this graph in the first quadrant makes any sense. Does that make sense to everybody? Does anybody have questions? Well, here's where I would say a few words about graphing on your calculator, except that our TI-84 emulation software is not playing nice with me. Yeah. So we'll have to, it's a little inconvenient. I'm going to hand out the classwork. You might not be able to do it. I mean, if you haven't graphed on a calculator before, I obviously haven't been able to give that part of the lecture, but I'll hand it out so that it's not sitting on my desk being forgotten. I will hopefully get this issue dealt with um, this evening, this afternoon, and then we'll pick up here tomorrow. So this is, as I sort of said, this is how my lectures go. A lecture, then 20 minutes or so classwork, except that in this case, it's a lecture dismissed class because I'm having technical issues. So I will see you tomorrow. Kind of your formation. Do, do I have enough of these? I do not. Uh, and you can either come with me or you can get them tomorrow in advance. Your choice. Uh, we'll come here tomorrow. All right, that's fine.